Always by my pals, Chris and Allison. Uh, Chris, frequent uh, show introducer. Allison, frequent show topic picker. It's what we do here: pick topics, introduce people to each other. Nice to meet you. Uh, what we do is uh, talk about a topic we generally know nothing about, or at least two of us generally know nothing about third person has to know something about it because they have to set us right at the end of the show. Although maybe we, maybe that's a gimmick we should try. All three of us know nothing about the topic and then spend time talking about it and leaving still know nothing, knowing nothing about it. And we walk uh, away without any closure. <laughs> no, never mind. That sounds terrible. How would we pick a topic? A faithful that's, listener could send one in. That's the tricky part. Yeah. It could, we could like pick the, pick a random Wikipedia article of the day and not read it. Seems really unlikely. Yeah. I think we'll just stick with this format. We all know that we like researching things enough that we wouldn't be able to hold ourselves back from just being like, oh, quickly. Uh, <laughs> what was the, I, you know what would be a really cool browser plugin would be the last article you looked up on Wikipedia. <laughs> because you know, you like, you found the Wikipedia rabbit hole and you're like, oh, I was reading about this and then I clicked on this and I clicked on this and then several days, weeks later, you, um, you finish and you're like, I was reading Wikipedia about, and then you, you start going down the rabbit hole mentally. What was the last thing I read? I don't remember anymore. Like I, it's blossomed into this thing. I, I know what the last it. thing I read on Wikipedia was, other than today's topic, mm. was Keanu Reeves' Wikipedia entry, which takes you on a journey. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why did he disappear? Like, I was just like, Let's like, why did he kind of disappear for a while? Why are we now in like a renaissance of Keanu Reeves, which I'm, why? I'm here for, but like, I'm just confused. And like, man, whew, why his, did personal, he just his personal journey, it's, an, it's a roller coaster. Is there like a quick synopsis as to why he disappeared for a while? Say hello to the truck driving on the property behind me. Hi, uh, Hi truck. truck. <laughs> um, How do we you know, just like uh, some pretty immense, like personal ups and downs. Like um, there's like deaths and car crashes of, close loved ones and like all sorts of uh, like very valid reasons you would disappear for a while um is I'm that just like, like is it like between the between like the bill and ted and the like matrix period or something like post matrix the, yeah post matrix and like matrix pre uh josh pre uh, john wick yeah <laughs> yeah and chunk of time i mean he is certainly beloved on the internet there's no doubt about that I think it's because he seems to have a sense of humor about himself, which is seems necessary if you're in a movie like Bill and Ted. Yeah, I don't know that how I don't know how you could progress in life uh having played that character and That's not have a sense of humor cool. about yourself. Like there's there's I mean yeah. you either you either do it or you're gonna have you're gonna have very thin skin. Yeah. That's true. Are are you I'm sorry. I just wanna be clear here. Are you are you disparaging Bill and Ted's excellent adventure in any way? No. Okay. But it's, to it's hard to escape the the dude uh, persona like from that from that role and from playing it more than once and even like even minor things that kind of sort of allude to it like um I know Kung like Fu. when he goes whoa <laughs> I'm Kung Fu in um in the matrix like it harkens sure. back to his his bill and ted days and and if you don't have a sense of humor about that character or playing that character or like having that part of your personality even then then it's going to be a really rough ride in in showbiz that's that's a valid point that is a valid point it's good anyway, to, know this is what we do. to go to bat for anybody disparaging bill and ted though <laughs> I should watch it again. It's been quite a while. I don't, um, I don't think I've ever watched it all the way through. And now yeah. there's a third one. Yes. I'm excited for that. 
I, the second one apparently is completely forgettable because I know it exists and that's about all I know about it. Focus Journey? <laughs> that what it's called? Yes. I think, I think I have watched them when I was an appropriately aged teenager. Um, oh, I thought you were going to say like an inappropriate like state of mind or something. No, <laughs> but I don't remember. I mean, I think it was like at a sleepover. Or something. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I deliberately put this shirt on because it's my it's my um all homage to um as the current sitting president says um i like i like a president who isn't under investigation uh <laughs> by like three different departments of government um and also to pay tribute to the first day of post uh robert Mueller special counsel uh report I'm sensing. Are you feeling how, like how this is that is a, feeling for everyone? How how are you is feeling like this is a new of... beginning? No, feels the same <laughs> as yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm wearing a shirt that smells a bit like chlorine because I didn't bathe after going in the pool yet. I will in a little while. I feel like today feels like yesterday. I don't feel the sense of of newness that I would like to. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you on that. Well, uh, uh, the UK has a new prime minister. That's new. That's true. A new horrible prime minister. Do you remember several uh, dozen episodes ago where I um, theorized that the internet is shit? I don't think I was thinking broadly enough. I think that was my problem. I think that I had not followed the logic to the logic. episode have you not theorized the internet is shit? Uh, I think 1101, I might have skipped that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Curious what episode 1101 was. Or maybe that, you that, didn't that. skip it, you just got distracted and focused on something else. Yeah, that's, that might be it. I, um, yeah, I, I think that I just didn't look broadly enough at everything because I, clearly that, that theory is not encompassing the greater world, which is also shit. Everything is shit. Yeah. Well, speaking yeah, I'm not of episode leaving. 1101, uh, this is episode 1000000. So uh, that's a bit of a milestone for us. Uh, what in, is that in real numbers? In real numbers, that is episode 64. Oh, I'm really impressed. Yeah. With these numbers. yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty good number there. It's, we've been doing this for more than a year. <laughs> we've been doing it for, for we have had more episodes than than podcasts that i listen to and i only listen to one podcast so that's not saying much but. <laughs> <laughs> i just feel i think what i'm impressed by is that like i i think it's hard to wrangle people's schedules and consistency so i think i'm constantly like yeah good on us yeah and also p.s i'm gonna run out of topics eventually <laughs> yeah I, I, I mean, maybe, but like, I don't, I think there's a never ending rabbit hole of yeah. weird Yeah, I think that you think you there. will, yeah. but you won't. And one day I'll just be like, I'm not going to do a book report this week. <laughs> I mean, you could show up at the topic and be like, here's the topic. And here's the link at the end. <laughs> <laughs> the end. There's another truck. It's a different what truck. What's going on? It is. They, um, the... That's the power line property back there. So they mowed with big mowers. And apparently part of the mowing schedule is people come out and make sure there's not trees that are interfering with the power lines. But really, the power lines started, I don't know. How often do they need to check that, though? It's not like trees just are like, oh, better check it. <laughs> well, we're getting close to like the heavy part of hurricane season in Florida. So I think this is just like the standard thing that they go and say, yeah, we don't need to worry about anything falling on these lines in particular. Because these are the main feeder lines for like this area of Jacksonville. The nice thing about that is when this area of Jacksonville loses power, my neighborhood is usually back on within, I mean, like, like the longest we've been out of power is like a day. So in the dystopian future, you're kind of in the hub of, of where, where all the yeah. action is. Yeah, I'll be killed quickly. You're right. That's a really <laughs> good point. Yeah. Just something to be aware of. Maybe get your canned good yeah. situation locked down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dog's getting a little old, so he's losing, dropping some weight. I'm not gonna, I can't count on eating him if <laughs> south. Uh, so if you do run out of topics, 
anything. <laughs> Uh, if, if we do run out of topics, uh, we could just uh, rotate through other podcast tropes. We could do an episode that's like uh, us live role-playing a D&D game. We could have uh, an episode where we have a guest uh, that we interview. We could, we could do a mystery, like a murder mystery episode. I mean, I'm sure there's other tropes too. Like, Top like, tens. Top tens. That? Top tens. I would love to have a, like a guest on and have it just be like, guess who this person is. <laughs> would, you would, um, like, uh, like that, that, that. What's your line, yeah. basically? <laughs> well, that, that video show that you. Oh, yeah. Name I already have forgotten, but we linked to it in the last episode. We definitely did. Oh, Under a Rock? Under a Rock. <laughs> yeah. I guess it wasn't the last episode because hmm. i have that one open hey so um i don't know if you noticed this or not this past saturday was the 50th anniversary of yeah. uh, apollo 11 landing on the moon and humankind setting foot on said moon mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so there was this great like relive apollo 11 twitter account that pretty much went from top to bottom mm. so i it was i had a sad moment yesterday like i had turned on notifications for every tweet from that account <coughs> oh, excuse me um so from launch until they arrived safely back in the ocean off the coast of Hawaii, um, I was getting tweets like on my watch. And so I was really sad yesterday when they landed and well, now I can stop reliving Apollo 11. Until next year. Yeah, this may be an annual thing if they do it. I, I would assume they would. It's a bot, right? I mean. I feel like why not? Yeah. Yeah. Let's flip it back on. <laughs> yep. Which brings us to this week's topic. Does it? Oh, good. No. Could, it could, maybe. Yeah. Like space. <laughs> it could be space related, actually. Yes. But if I maybe read a bit more about it, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew what it was, it could be space related. Um, so this week's topic is en passant. It's, it French. A... it's French. I will spell it for you. <laughs> E-N space P-A-S-S-A-N-T. En passant. Yeah, it's a, a chess move, um, and I'm trying to remember what it is. It's something about uh, the pawns and passing each other, uh, and I believe it is if a pawn arrives at the first rank of pawns and you take from that rank and move two, you have passed that pawn, so you have captured it. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> well, it's been good talking with you. I'll see you in a week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I know that. I don't play chess. Yeah, yeah follow-up question. Okay. And follow-up question, have you ever heard of chemess? Chemess. That's, Which that's my strategy. It's just like chess, but the king can move two squares at once. Oh. That's Which apparently is, a, is actually a game changer. I'm not a huge yeah. chess person. Although it sounds like I am from, from this episode so far. It would, it would have to be because one of the strategies, I, I say I don't play. Like, I play with the kids, so, like, I don't have to. Yeah, but you're playing with like intense rules like en passant. No, I mean, I don't think it's ever happened in a game. I just happen to know that it exists. I don't know that I've ever had that happen in a game of chess. What is, what is the rule with the pawns passing? So, you know when you, when you are first starting and your pawns can move two squares instead of just the one? Um, if your pawn moves the two squares and is horizontal with your opponent, your opponent can take your pawn as if you had only moved one square. Oh, I had it backwards, actually. So, does that mean that they so they move their they pawn? move diagonally, but they take your pawn even oh, though. Oh, okay. So it's, I think it's the only move that you actually get capture, but you don't wind up on the square of the yeah, opponent okay. captured. It, it's the translation is in passing, I think, right? Yeah. Or something like that. No, you're right on. And now I've got nothing. <laughs> um. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, I what podcast was I listening to? Do we have any reviews, like written reviews, for our podcast? Uh, I Yikes. strongly doubt it. But Another Spotify. podcast I was listening to did review the reviews, where they picked a review and then they. Uh, let's they see. were a bit more popular though, so I was thinking. Um. Well, let's talk about chess a bit. I think, I think that's a good topic in general. Everyone knows what chess is, but I don't think a lot of people play chess. And I think that chess has this 
Did you, like, thing did you that ever have to play chess in school? No. No. We no, my like uncle a... taught me chess. Have to, no. <laughs> have to, yeah, I don't like, maybe, maybe I shouldn't phrase it. But there was, like, not a chess club, but it was, like, I don't know, at some point we had to learn the, diff the ways that all the different pieces moved and things like that. My I uncle taught me chess when I was probably seven or eight because I wanted to learn how to play it. My dad was like, uh, your uncle can teach you. I don't know if he didn't know or he just was like, I'm not going to teach it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I had a book on chess and I still didn't understand how it worked. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. I, so I've taught both kids how to play. And Tyler is, is better at remembering how pieces move. Um, but there's something about like strategy that is very difficult in chess because everything can move so many different ways. So you kind of have to have like these really broad ideas for how things are going to happen. Well, and I think you also have to have like a, a wider scope of being, of thinking like three or four steps ahead and then adapting it depending on how your opponent moves. I feel like that's a really certain, it's a really specific way of thinking strategically that like I can think strategically, but I think like one or two steps ahead. I'm not thinking five steps ahead. I generally am like, this is the area I want to be concentrated in. And, I'm, and heading get, over. I'm heading over here. <laughs> yeah, generally, like, I'm going to go over in this spot. And then if there's a reason to change that, I will. But otherwise, I kind of keep it there and figure out how to put things there that aren't at risk and force my opponent to give me more things in that spot until that spot can encroach on the king in some way. If given the choice, would you choose chess over some, something like checkers? Yeah, no. for sure. For sure. No checkers for you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, know why. I, I mean, it's not like I don't know the rules of 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 chess. It's not like I don't know how all the pieces move. It's not like you know I I know most of like the fundamentals of playing chess, like in terms of movement and like sort of vague strategy. But like I don't I, I don't feel I don't feel confident enough in my ability to develop uh, a strategy, a winning strategy that um, that leads me to like choose that game over um over anything else and checkers i do feel like i know what the strategy is and um i mean it's also a lot more straightforward um but i mean there's there's strategy involved in, in checkers too though also there's certainly totally. it's just more fun <laughs> it's a lot more movement i feel like yeah is there i was looking to see if there was a chess bot for slack and there is of course there is of course there is. Wow. I we have, the our, internet, um, we have a Harry Potter chess set uh, with like the chess figures from whatever whatever book they went down into the where they had like the giant chess pieces, the giant wizard's oh, chess. Oh, okay. So it's got those those are the chess pieces. My freshman year of college, um uh, I, would, I was staying in a dorm that had like a connection to a bathroom between another dorm. So like four, four dudes sharing a bathroom, which was nice. Um, but so our, like my roommate and I realized we need toilet paper. So we went out my first, uh, first, I think first or second night in college, went and bought a chess set, like the cheapest one they had at Walmart. Maybe it was Kmart back in those days. I mean, it was like $3, like the, the lightest, cheapest plastic pieces you ever put your hand on. And it was like, a manila folder thickness cardboard for the <laughs> for the board. Um, and then a slight, uh, a slight breeze would knock all the pieces over. Yeah, like you couldn't like slam a door or the game was over. Yeah. Um, and uh, and orange juice. And uh, is that I don't first, know what my is that your first college purchase? Is that is that why yeah. we're calling it? Okay. I don't know. I just thought it was funny. I remember buying a chess set and my roommate was like cracking up. He thought it was a hysterical like group of items. Orange <laughs> juice, toilet paper and a chess set. It's like this is all you need. <laughs> I'm ready for college. I don't know about you, man. I'm um, a grown up. <laughs> follow up question: Do you still have that chess set? No, I do not. Yeah. I do not. I think that um, I think I left it with him. I think we played maybe one time. I think we thought we would do that thing, you know, where like there's a game set up and just in passing you take turns and make plays, mm -hmm. but that's not happening in a dorm because every spare surface is is covered in junk, mm -hmm. like dirty clothes or textbooks or. At least if you're male. <laughs> I don't know that that's I mean, necessarily was, the case if you're not. I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure with the dorm size, I mean, it was small. It was like, you know, the two beds end to end were pretty much touching. So it was as long as two beds and maybe three times as wide. 
So See, there wasn't room, a lot of space. My roommate and I, um, we, so his bed was on one wall and my bed was on the opposite wall. And then in between our two beds, we had um, what we referred to as the tower of electronics. Um, so it was the two desks in the room back to back with our computers on it. And our computers are like these huge hulking monsters because back in the day, that's what you had. Yeah, and the huge hulking monitors. And then also in between was like, the, I had a component stereo system at the time. So like my stack of uh, stereo equipment right there and like speakers and then like more speakers. Like, so it was just like, yeah, it was a huge tower of electronics that just kind of grew and, and we legitimately couldn't see over the tower of electronics. So uh, on the ops, on the wall over there, there is a mirror because that's where the sink was. So we would talk to each other through the mirror. Um, because that was the only way we could actually see each other. <laughs> this roommate, I'm not sure if we had like a spat or something, but there was quite a while. His bed was near the window. We were on the first floor. So he started using the window as his door. He would just <laughs> hop into bed and like roll out the window and it would close behind him and he'd go to class. He'd come back and I'd be in there and the window would open. He'd pop back in. Hey, Gary. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Seems like classic college shenanigans. <laughs> Our, we were on the third floor, which also happened to be the party floor. Um, so the window uh, jumping was not a thing that that, that was possible from <laughs> my first <laughs> dorm room. <laughs> wasn't wasn't gonna wasn't gonna uh, scale the wall we did have a an adventure um uh so um we a previous uh class a previous group of individuals had uh built um a server well they built a server room a computer lab out of a unused dorm room and then they also uh, because our our program was basically like um all about like um self-initiated like classes and programs and 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 things um like really empowering students to like do their own stuff so somebody at some point said hey we need a computer lab i'm going to set up a computer lab with this like old used equipment and we'll have a server room and we'll have it you know whatever um so so we had our server and so they they and then they pr they presumably pr uh pr propositioned to get access to this uh room this dorm room uh to use their server room and they it was fine um so we had this we had a server room uh and then um so when i was there um before the 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 entirety of um the school did not have um internet access at the time that i got there beyond dial-up and only certain people could have access to even dial-up um, like you had to like make a petition to the IT team or whatever to, so that you could so that you could even just dial out because their phone system was weird because university phone systems are weird. Um, so so and they had done that for the server. Um, so the server was connected and had a dedicated connection on a 56k, maybe even two 56k modems. Um, Ooh, shotgunned. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, and so, uh, so that was connected, and all, the, and so all of the computers in the computer lab were connected. So during my time there, somebody had the brilliant idea: well, why don't we just uh, string a whole bunch of Ethernet, like, to people, so that they can a get some crappy access to the internet and check their email, and b then we have an awesome like local area network that we can do cool stuff on. So like. By the end of the year, uh, we had the fire marshals come in and say, yeah, this is a fire hazard um, <laughs> because we had strung cable out the window into people's rooms uh, and like down the hall and duct taped it to the ceiling, like down, like, like up out, out the window and up a floor and into somebody else's room. And it was amazing. <laughs> we were, we, for some reason we had internet access from the university of, North Carolina and Charlotte, like an hour drive away. But it was the early days of the internet, so everyone had a public IP address, um, it was, which was fantastic. Um, <laughs> learned so much stuff. <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, I, I wish that was still the thing. I mean, even now, like, if you had an IP address, you pretty much had it for the year, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I thought it was interesting. The whole um, 
the whole project of stringing every of, of getting everybody connected everybody who wanted to be connected um was interesting because um like eventually people just bought um whoever like the 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 geeks that were like sort of maintaining the lab um basically just bought bulk cable um and then like <laughs> and then like you know a bunch of like ends and so they'd they'd be stringing the the cables themselves and that wasn't even a thing that i thought was possible at the time and i think for a long time i still had some of my cable um was was cable that they had like put together um like in my stacks and stacks of ethernet cables that i had for a very long time because it was like the longest ethernet cable that like i had out of my collection of ethernet cables this was the longest so i kept it for longer than other things um yeah well, then you end up obviously keeping there's that. a learning obviously there's a learning experience like i i totally like it's you know i support all the things you learned in college that weren't really the college part of it yeah. <laughs> I was in high school. My entire college experience, like (laughs) my entire college experience, was learning about things that had nothing to do with college. In high school, I had a job with the assistant scoutmaster. Had a company in town, doing um, building smart card readers, like prototypes. Um, So, like credit cards with a chip in them. That the time were, I mean, it was like wacky. Why would you do that? (laughs) But so he was he was building like this thing that like the concept of how do you read and interpret a token and use that as access. So they went to Comdex is what it was at the time out in Vegas and came back and had I, several hundred orders for prototypes. So my job was the solder monkey. I had to solder pieces on these boards and- You were ahead of the curve. I, I, wish, I, I, don't I know. wish I had, no. had been forced to solder large quantities of something in high school because I good way like, to learn to solder yeah i feel like my soldering skills later in life uh left much to be desired <laughs> and continue to leave much to, to be desired well one of the things they did initially was um to create the they didn't want to like hardwire the cable to the serial port that they were using nine pin serial port so they took a uh, flat cat five i guess cat yeah yeah, it's cat five, but like flat. So crimp on an Ethernet RJ45 at one end and a uh, and then the other end we soldered on like a true nine pin serial thing. So I had to make all those cables and they were, I don't know, like that long. It was silly. And then once everything was made, then I had to make the pizza boxes that they all shipped in and then put the company sticker on the outside and were you the only one working for them? Oh, <laughs> uh, the other owner's son worked like once uh once a week. So I worked. So you were school. wearing you were wearing the majority of the hats in this situation. I mean, I was only working like fifteen hours a week or something. It wasn't like I was working that much. Um, and then the owner's son would come in on the weekends just for some cash. But I was always mad when he came in because he always leaves this like the assembly station a mess. <laughs> but the <laughs> server, they had a T one, T one or T three. I don't remember. But I mean, at that point, like a blazing fast internet connection. So they saw that as like a revenue opportunity. So they hosted websites for local companies, which at that point was like, here are four static HTML pages. <laughs> so I got to work with uh, this guy, Sai, a bit, who was the webmaster. But their their server was like, they had a board like bolted into like a washing machine shell because it was metal. So they could just mount it and they just cables dropped inside it. <laughs> and a fan going right up through it. Oh, here comes the tractor, I think. Super exciting. Oh, behind you. I was like... Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> there it goes. There it is. That idyllic pastoral setting. This is the uh, most recent uh, evidence of my soldering expertise. Oh, yeah. One? Coolest badge ever. Wow. Yeah, what was cool about these um, is you'll notice, I mean, currently it's only flashing red it's because it's not connected to their wi-fi but they all spoke to each other um during the conference so like um there would be like like patterns on on the badges that um that would like you'd be walking around and they'd be like flashing the same like synchronized um uh yeah 
And then there would be like add-on packs that you could build onto this. Like they had like a module that you could put on top that like had like, you could program a message in there and like have it display like something. I mean, it's, it's for, for a conference, it's all about like open source uh, hardware and software. Like it's a pretty, pretty cool gimmick to have like a little hack station and like have a badge that you can actually hack that, that legitimately has like an Arduino chip on it and you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Um, I just, what? Have an yeah. I love I, that I, idea. Yeah. I need a badge like that to wear at every conference. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just be like, boop, and like scan different things. And I don't know. So I'm just impressed that I managed to get it to work. I have my other ones here too, somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's one of my like smaller goals or smaller goals, I shouldn't say. It's kind of a larger goal. It's like in the next year ahead to be like, oh yeah, I want to like dabble more back in Arduino and like little hardware stuff. and play around more i started and then i just it's so um, hard because time the, and effort. the time it takes yeah so this is amazing the so that's another badge yeah okay um and each of these things right here is a light um it's a little tiny led light um and they did the same sort of thing with that and then my my soldering of those lights was extremely bad um as you can see i, I think it got better uh the last time i did it our um the it's Toronto so Public Library has like Arduino little like classes and then they have kits and stuff that you can rent. Um so I keep meaning to investigate more because I'm just like everyone says that they're like very simple and I'm like that's exactly what I need. I need like your simple like explain it to me on whatever level and then I can build from there. I just I feel like I feel like I feel more at home with Raspberry Pi because with Raspberry Pi it's less about the building things and more about like here's a little mini computer that you can do stuff with. What do you want to do with it? Someone I've else only... mentioned that to me too. They were like as an entry point you might find that a little more like comfortable and I was like, oh maybe. <laughs> so I found the Raspberry Pi, yeah, I think yeah, because you're writing code or installing packages. Oh, yeah. I think everything I've done that's useful with a small board has been with the Raspberry Pi. I actually have one that's like my network operations center that keeps my IP address updated for a subdomain at um, Cloudflare. And it, it's, I don't, it's even know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going for useful though. Like, I think I just, I really, yeah. I think I just want to like mess around and be like that light turned on. Like I really, I'm keeping it low, low bar here. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I built, I built a, so there's lots of like, um, there's lots of like uh, tutorials and stuff for kids, particularly for Raspberry Pi. And, and I adapted one of those things to build um, a a dog uh, a, a dog cam that is motion act. So it's got a motion sensor on it, and when the motion sensor triggers, it takes a picture of whatever it sees. Um, so they have it. They the 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 the, um, the tutorial is like it's a parent detector. Um, so like it's a motion sensor and then when it senses motion, it records video and I'm like, well, yeah, we could record video, but like, it would be cool to like, get like cool pictures of like whatever animal. And I kind of wanted to build one for like, to like, you know, put outside or something to like, you know, either put on the porch and like take pictures of people that are coming to deliver or, you know, steal deliveries, you know, on our porch, like as a security camera sort of thing, or like, um, like to put in the backyard, like, you know, when animals come to visit the backyard, to like, you know, have a, like, Hey, there's a thing, but obviously like the, the resolution would be awful because it'd be nighttime and there'd be no lights. Um, like grainy pictures of nighttime yeah. squirrels. <laughs> right, yeah, I like grainy pictures of, of darkness. Um, <laughs> sound because the camera's not very good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it was really simple. I mean, because the the code is, I mean, most of the code it's Python and it's mostly written for you. You just sort of and with that, like, I just need to change uh, the the line that said record video to record picture, and it was, I mean, just yeah. Have you done a I, lot with Python? No, uh, everything I've done with Python has been uh, Raspberry Pi related. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a great um, PHP library for handling GPIO. Um, so if you're like, if you're dabbling and you want to stick with PHP because it's comfortable, mm -hmm. um, just composers in your composer included, and then you just set up like each header, and it's yeah. it's good. I mean, I've used it for like the flipping lights on and off kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but you could, I mean, for any module that that you're just like changing you know, up or down voltage to take a picture is, you know, yeah. sort of three volts and then That's turn cool. it back off or whatever. Um, I like it for um, like the Christmas light displays you see all the time. 
So, so when I get my act together, I can have like the holiday display. If I'm, if well, I'm, so we do trick or trunk is like our big thing as a family, right? We get dressed up. This year, our, we're going to do Christmas as our, as our theme. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking that I will set up the Raspberry Pi with a bunch of relays. So the, and we're going to have a Christmas tree outside the trunk. So we're going to have the lights turn on and off of the Christmas tree to the music that we're pumping through the stereo. Mm -hmm. Also, kicking on the idea, maybe it might be fun to like hook a microphone up to it, and bring my guitar, and hook my guitar up so that the lights are playing like, with my with guitar. Mm. Yeah, because it's any. I mean, it's it, it. The way it works is it just takes the signal, either input or whatever it's playing, MP3s, and each channel is assigned to a, a range of frequencies. So, like, oh well, when that bass note hits from, you know, I don't know, E one to E, you know, three or whatever, then light up this strand. So it's pretty pretty low end from that perspective, but I think that might be a fun, I don't know. I mean, I, re I really want like a really bright, shiny, flashing tree. Raspberry Pi's good. <laughs> You're like, the bright and shiny part is the key, the key end goal of this. Of this I mean, it just seems like totally irrational and silly for a trunk to have this. And I mean, I won't need power. I can do it with, oh, I will need power for the lights, won't I? Yeah, I guess I will need power. But now what, what's the feedback from the fam as far as these sorts of endeavors? Um, are they so like, they, they want the bright and shiny as well? Or yeah. yeah, yeah, they do. Yep. So as long as you hit the end goal, they're fine with however you get there. Yeah. I mean, and really like the kids are there for the candy and they have a good time. So <laughs> it's fun. That'd be a it's good fun. name of an autobiography. The kids are here for the candy. <laughs> that is a good name for an autobiography. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, we have a countdown. I didn't even mm. notice. Yeah, I guess we should do uh, questions. Do we oh, have questions? A, a question. Um, we have Allison questions. And again, as always, you can submit questions through the form on the website or on Twitter at Binary Jazz. We are on all of the things that do podcasting, at least all the things worth noting. Uh, so that's worth noting. And that is one thing that I need to update in our outro. Uh, because I say that we are on uh, iTunes and Google Play, but now we're on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. Um, so, so legitimate. Yeah, I know. Seriously. <laughs> 64 episodes in. 100, no, 1 million episodes in. It's fine. Um, <laughs> what job did you want when you were a kid? Is this, mm. is this, is this, is this the, what did you want to be when you grew up when like you're, like, is that, is that what this question is? Or is this like legitimately what job did we think we were going to do? What job did you think you were going to do? So like, I can't say rock star. Well, I mean, like if you legitimately thought it, then like, I think, I, I think there's some overlap there to be honest. Yeah. Like, cause because like, that was, guessing... that, that was definitely one, um, but writer was the other one. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to program what you wanted to write. Like fiction, yeah. nonfiction. Yeah, fiction. I wanted to be like Stephen King. Yeah, I still want to be like Stephen That's King. That's true. In general. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of lesser options than that. I agree. <laughs> I I, uh, I wanted to be a computer programmer. Really? Yeah. I thought you were going to say astronaut for sure. <laughs> I uh oh no I knew I was, that wasn't going to happen. Or chef actually yeah. I could see challenge you. accepted apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and so then I spent a lot of years not doing that and finally decided, I mean, why not? <laughs> so, so that's what I do. Yeah, that's, that's like, that's my, my transition from not being a web developer to being a web developer is like I made websites and then I'm like, I don't want to do this as a job. And then I spent like five or six years not doing it as a job. I'm like, yeah, let's do that thing. <laughs> let's come back to it. <laughs> let's come back to it. Yeah, that's a better, that's a better option. <laughs> it's better to be paid for it than to like dabble in it in your free time and not get paid for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want it to be like something I ended up hating. Um, like I didn't want the work to kill it for me, to kill the like joy that it brings me. Yeah, but so much of it is the people and the workload, right? Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.